Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Michi Makes Up. I have another declutter video for you today. What I have here in these two baskets are in the uh, right side. These are all my blushes, highlighters, bronzers, and even some collectibles that I do not plan to use, but I've included it nonetheless. And on the left side here uh, is actually my foundations, concealers, uh, cushions, but also miscellaneous. Anything that I may have missed in my lipstick declutter videos, and you know, I've been through in some samples here that I missed previously. So I thought, let's just include them and get this year's declutters done. Get some space back in my vanity uh, drawers so we have room for <laughs> holiday makeup. And I don't think I'll be able to fit everything into this single video today. So I've decided right off the bat, we're just going to leave this for a different day, a different video. We're just going to focus on the blushes, bronzers, and highlighters, uh, which I, as you can see, have accumulated quite a bit over the past two years. And I am feeling a bit under the weather, so I found the most comfortable clothes to be in <laughs> for this video, uh, including wearing uh, sneakers around the house because I have orthopedics that support my arches. Yes, I am feeling quite tired. Um, so if you find that I have maybe a lack of energy in my voice, um, that is that is probably why. However, if you're into soothing, calming, or you're looking for something that's really chill, I hope you find that in this video uh, and that I could keep you company while you know either you work or you're doing you know stuff around the house, whatever the case may be. So let's get started here. So the first thing I have here, which I took out a moment ago, is a collectible makeup item from Sailor Moon. And this was released part of their 20th or 25th anniversary of the series. This is an all over glowing face powder. Uh, you get a nice sheen from it, but it's not as pearlescent or glowing uh, as the Guerlain Meteorites. So I, I do think the concept takes after Guerlain's Meteorites. It's kind of their own spin on this. Uh, this was released, I wanna say, hold on, Kanebo, which is a Japanese makeup brand. I have no plans to use this. I've swatched this once. I really um, got this so that I could keep it as a collectible. And I think it looks really beautiful, keeping it on the vanity, on display. And if you have seen my other declutter videos, you know I struggle. I keep all the packaging and I will definitely keep the packaging for this one here. So I'll set this aside. Next I have this blush here, which is a Korean brand. Um, this is McQueen, really light blush. Um, it is apricot peach. It's buildable. Uh, it's good for fair light, perhaps medium skin tone because it is buildable. Um, but I did get this from Salvana and uh, I, I did actually do a video on this, which I really like too. So I like to revisit this sometime. This is from Tarte. Uh, this was a limited edition shade, I think. It's called Energy and I broke it uh, soon after I got it. It's kind of sad. But at the time, it was just what I was looking for. I wanted more blushes. It's a much brighter pink next to that apricot peach from McQueen. But I am ready to part with my blushes here. My Tarte blushes, I mean, um, because I've had this for a quite a number of years now and I think it's time to time to let it go. Um, these are their uh, Amazon Clay Skin Intuitive 12 Hour Blushes. They do wear nicely and if you have combination to oily skin, I think you'll enjoy or you'll find these to have like fairly long lasting and it doesn't, they're matte too, so they don't add to any oiliness or shine. Um, shelf life is 12 months, which, you know, had this for way more than 12 months. So I'm going to declutter this. Next, another Tarte blush here. This is Expose, and I believe this was the first blush from Tarte that was really, like that shade that I really wanted. And it's definitely hit hard pan, but I can still, you know, I did multiple swipes here, can get some color from it. 
uh, but the product feels hard basically. So it's time to go. I've had it for many years as well. Then we have here a Suku Pure Color Blush. Uh, this is 124, which is a limited edition shade. This came out during spring of this year. Whoops, I guess I have a plastic over it. Um, really pretty. It is a great spring shade. Their blushes have this most beautiful, soft sheen to them. And it does remind me, especially, you know, this right here, like this side where you get more of the sheen. It definitely does remind me of Hourglass's um, ambient lighting powders. I love to do a video to compare Hourglass powders uh, with the Suku blushes. But also, actually that reminds me, somebody had suggested or asked if I could do a video comparing the ambient powders like especially the all of our face powders with um, like a Shantakai all over blur powder. This is matte finish. And I have not forgotten about that. I am, you know, constantly have a backlog of video ideas, but I think it is time to get to it. So um, I haven't forgotten. I apologize for how long it's been. Um, it's definitely on my list and I hope to get to it in the next week or two. So I'm keeping this blush. Um, I love Suku Pure Color blushes. I will be keeping this. Speaking of Hourglass, here is the Sculpt palette, or is it Sculpture? The Sculpture palette. This was released for holiday 2020, and um, I actually really enjoy this, even though I don't find myself going back to it too often. Um, there's just a lot of options. Um, but I actually really enjoyed or these two blushes here. Um, this bronzer, though, initially I thought, oh, this is going to be way, you know, like way too deep for me, especially in the middle of winter time. But it just turns out that, you know, they need to work on their shade ranges here. It just turns out that it still works really well for uh, light to medium skin tone, which is where I fall under on the lighter side in the winter time. And you know, more medium during the summer. Um, so I quite like this. These shades were all, you know, suitable for my skin tone. And I really just wonder for this year, uh, certainly they're going to release one of these as well, but I just, I just hope that they could, you know, do something that the community really wants because first of all, it's just, it's time. Second, it'd be interesting, something new, something different to explore. But yes, I do like the ambient powders. We'll be keeping this. Then I have here, I love this Jouer palette. Um, this is, it doesn't actually have a name, but the shades are amazing. And I have not really kept up too closely with uh, Jouer products, Jouer releases this past year. I remember seeing this and just being completely taken. First, you've got, I mean, they're all beautiful shades. You can also mix and match and combine them to create something new, something different, custom to your preference. But this one here, my gosh, look at that orange. I'm gonna keep this out so I can use it. But yes, um, unfortunately it is no longer available. However, the shades found in here, you can actually still get them in uh, duos they're still available in duo. So it's not like these are, you know, limited edition or completely retired from Jouer altogether. I'll be keeping this. Next I have here the Chantecaille Blurring Face Powder. I love this. I have it in the uh, Hummingbird Compact. It came back in a flower power, like a 3D uh, compact, which is just gorgeous. Uh, I think it is still available on Chantecaille's website. This is really great. This powder works well for um, any skin types, including uh, oily combination or combination to oily skin, which is where I fall into. And uh, it just holds up really well. I took this with me last summer. I went on a road trip and there were some days well over triple uh, digits and it just kept my makeup intact. Uh, things looked things look good help keep like the oil under control a bit too so I will be keeping this highly recommend the blurring powder 
Next I have Natasha Denona's Bronze Cheek Face Glow Palette. I think the opinion around this palette was split when this first came out. This was like last August. Um, we have two, actually we have, was it two new formulas here? Well, this one, the Bounce Cream Glow and Bounce Cream Blush, both were definitely new formulations for Natasha Denona's face palettes. And you know what's interesting is that the shelf life here says 12 months and it is August. So yeah, I would say it's just at the shelf life. And I think these two have hit whatever, you know, version of hard pan cream bounce or bounce cream formulas have hit because they're, I can still get product from them, but they're definitely not as emollient as they were before. And I feel like if I, actually not I feel like, if I press on this, you can see this is what happens. I still get color from it, um, but they, I feel like it might be, they might be on their last leg. Uh, I'm keeping it for now, but I think for my next round of declutter, I should brace myself and might have to let that go then. Next I have Wayne Goss's Weightless Veil Blush Palette, and this is a beautiful product from him. Uh, the pans are huge and holy, I don't know what happened here. What happened here? Did I drop it or dig a nail in? This looks much more than just accidentally digging my nail in. I don't remember dropping this while it's opened. Hmm, it's very suspect. Uh, <laughs> this is in Blush Peony. We have Sweetened. And then here is Shimmer pink. Ooh, okay. Well, once I got my finger over it, I was able to sort of smooth it out a bit. It has not hit a hard pan. No evidence of that, but that's just so eye-catching. It's beautiful. The highlighter is creamy or creamier. And this is definitely more a powder blush and this is yeah so the highlighter is a cream and the blush is more of a powdered texture we'll be keeping this and the other wayne goss weightless veil blush palette that i have is in coral rose this is uh, blushing and this is rosy and i don't know if you can see this right here yeah you can see that Really strange. Um, I definitely did not dig into either of the palettes. Um, the fact that they both have this little texture here, this little ridge, uh, makes me think it's just what the product is doing as it ages. And it still feels fine on the finger. Um, it's fairly creamy and I've got a nice swatch here. And this is beautiful. I enjoy Coral Rose more than um, Peony, although they're both beautiful. Yeah, so no issues, still pigmented, can still get a good swatch, but yeah, I, I think something is going on here with the product. Um, shelf life on these are nine months. Oh, okay, all right, nine months, not 12. So I've had these for probably nine months by now. Interesting. Well, um, I will keep this, but perhaps next round it's time to let it go. We'll see what happens then. Next, I have a convertible color from Stila. So these cream blushes were the first cream blushes I've ever bought. Um, these can be used for cheeks, eyes, your lips. And I do have a cream blush video where I talk about my entire cream blush collection. So if you're interested in knowing a bit more about this, um, you can certainly go check out that video. I'll have a link below. But yeah, it's really gross. It's so gross. Time to let this go. Then we have here from Flower Beauty, a Pyramids. Um, this one is in Peach Glow. And it is, I think it looks beautiful. Um, you can certainly swirl your brush around and you do get a very glowing effect. 
It's very easy to get a lot of product too. It's a lot. There's a lot going on there. You can also pick and choose, of course, just focusing on certain segments here. Um, I just don't grab for this, and I think these shades are a bit too, maybe too intense for me. Yeah, and I just, so I just find myself not really grabbing for this, but you can use some of this for your eyes as well. I'm actually going to declutter this. Then we have from House of Siange. This is their complexion duo. It has a highlighter named Joyful and a blush called Pink Bow. So this is a highlighter and this is Pink Bow. Compared to the Flower Beauty Pyramids, this looks so low-key and subdued. It really is, but it's, it's beautiful on the skin. It builds beautifully. It, it just kind of is very classy, no fuss product. Uh, it's made in Italy. It's buildable. So, I mean, it's really pretty, but House of Siange is not quite known for their makeup. They're known for their uh, fragrances. And I think that's why we didn't hear or see a big splash from them. But I really find this pretty nice. And uh, this is also in the Disney Mickey Mouse and Minnie theme. We'll be keeping this. I have the Suku from Holiday of Last Year uh, blush palette. This is actually blush and highlighter. You might even be able to use this as a bronzer. Um, this is in 102. This shade here is beautiful for a highlight if I don't know what to do, like what kind of highlighter I want. Sometimes I just default and go to this shade because I know it's going to work. Yeah. Gorgeous. We'll be keeping this palette. And this is a recent addition to my collection. This is from Dior's Feathers of a Bird collection. And this is in the shade Nude Glide. It's like a mauvey, rosy pink. Beautiful. Also, it has some gold micro glitter. Very, very pretty. And it's not too much. It actually won't make you look oily or too shiny. And also the embossing is gorgeous. We'll be keeping this. And then I have here, this is a highlighter, but it's basically a clear balm and it's from Mario, Makeup by Mario. This actually reminds me of um, other highlighter balms that I have. So this is from Merit, this is their Day Glow. And this has some color, but effectively it does something very similar to the balm. Let me swatch both of them side by side. In fact, it also reminds me of Westman Atelier's highlighter balm as well. I'll swatch all these three side by side and kind of give you an idea of, like in my mind, how I think of these. So I did take the other swatches off my hand because I didn't want, I was running out of room and I didn't want to contaminate these balms. So this is clear, absolutely, you know, no color to it, but it has that glisten. And then this one here from Westman Atelier, it is called Light Up Highlighter Stick and is in the shade Nectar. So that has a bit of color and you could, you could build it up, you could build it up, but the color isn't going to really build up that much more from here. And then this is from Merit Beauty, which also will give you some color. Merit Beauty and Westman Atelier, very similar ideas. Um, the two shades are different. I think Nectar is warmer, more peachy, whereas uh, Merit's is going to be more pink. It has that like pink and white shift and uh, Mario's is clear. Because these are bombs, none of them dry down. And so if you, if it's a windy day and you're out and you have this on, your hair will stick to your face. It's not too bad with these two, but with Mario, you're definitely going to get more 
um, it's stickier basically. It's a little bit like putting Vaseline on your face. I know that doesn't sound really nice or elegant, but it does have that effect. And because it's clear, it's gonna go with everything. It's gonna go with whatever makeup look you want. It's just gonna make you look um, really great. Um, it, it just goes with anything. So the part I don't like is just how sticky it is. But if you're not out on a windy day, I, I doubt you're gonna feel annoyed or trapped <laughs> by this by this like balmy highlighter. Um, you know, I did reach for this quite a bit before I got these two balms, which I think are similar. So um, I will be keeping this. I think it does definitely have its use. I think while all three look very glistening and emollient, I do think this one, when the light hits it, you just get a little bit more. Um, it's almost hard to identify too because without touching it, it looks like you might be using some kind of like mystery highlighter where depending on how the light hits on it, it could really look blingy, but then from a different angle, it looks really subtle. It looks like a very natural glow. So, you know, I kind of like this for this reason. There's still something unique about it. And these two, um, clean formulation, and I and actually do reach for these uh, quite a bit the day to day. So we'll be keeping these. Then I have Pat McGrath's Divine Blush, and this is in the shade Divine Rose. Beautiful. I just haven't been grabbing for these as often as I thought I would have when I initially got them. These go on really beautifully. It's a beautiful collection from her. Um, not much to say about it other than, actually, I have a few more. We'll go through these. Pat McGrath blushes. I actually ended up returning one of them because and I couldn't tell you what happened, but basically from the time I opened it, it just had this very strong chemical scent. This is my favorite shade. This is Flotatious. It just had a very, very strong chemical scent. And I thought, okay, well maybe it's gonna, and this is the highlighter, Golden Nectar. I thought it was gonna go away and it didn't. I waited for some time. Eventually I just returned it. I think it was, don't think it was supposed to smell like that because none of the other blushes from this collection or the highlighter had that scent. Or at least if it did, yeah, this one doesn't smell like it either. But if they do, I can't smell it. So that's why I returned it. Perhaps there's some kind of defect with it. Next, I have another Tarte blush here. This is in the shade Fearless. I definitely went through a Tarte blush phase nonetheless. Uh, this does remind me a little bit of energy because they're both pretty bright. I think energy is more Peachy and this is definitely more pink But I will be decluttering this and Then I have here a blush from Merit called Beverly Hills I love I love Merit just their clean formulation, but the products work really well. Um, just very, very easy. These stay on all day. Actually, all of the cream blushes that you'll see me talk about, they stay on your cheeks all day. Um, provided that you don't, you know, run your hand over your face or anything like that, you can just count on them. Stay and put, whether you wear them underneath your setting powder or over top, you could put your blush over top the setting powder and then put finishing powder on, they, these will stay put. I have another blush here, powder product from Shantakai. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? But that glitter is gonna go away once you really get into it. This is Grace, and I have used Grace before. I was just going really light, so the turtle can last a little bit longer. We'll be keeping this. And then I have here the, oh, I have one more. Where did it go? These are the, Hermes blushes, and I have three shades, Rose Abricot. Rose Ombre. I found it, and then this is Rose Pomme. Oops. I think all three are really 
pretty, like the three shades I chose. Actually, I think all the shades were really pretty. They're not as silky as I think initially I thought they would be. I think they're fine. They also have a soft um, fragrance scent to them. I think they're fine, they just weren't as. Basically, if I had to compare these to the Pat McGrath blush, I think these are definitely silkier um, and blend better than these blushes. But I do think they're beautiful, especially for, you know, for a luxury beauty collector. Um, I, I do think this is something you wanna try as part of, to have one in your collection. Um, you can also reuse these compacts. So you can see this hole here, this pinhole. You stick something into it, it pops up the pan, and you can put a different shade into it. So I do like the sustainability concept around these blushes. We'll be keeping these. Then we have here another Hourglass. This is their ambient lighting palette in Ghost, released in holiday, holiday of 2019, yes. This was my first ambient palette, and uh, I quite like everything. These face powders, though, they're good for finishing. Uh, I try to use it as a setting power powder. It never worked for me, um, but yeah, I, I actually did end up using this quite a bit more <laughs> in the Sculpture palette. We'll be keeping these. I have a feeling I'll have a third one of these um, that I will buy this year to review and try out for you guys. So I definitely want to keep these two for reference. And then this is another Suku Pure Color Blush released along with the um, Spring Collection this year. And this is in the shade 125. I love this one as well. They're just very light, but they're buildable. I think possibly due to humidity over the summer, all of the, like a lot of my highlighters, just they're kind of bumpy and textured. Really interesting. I hope this doesn't shorten the shelf life too much, like it's 12 months and I've had it for um, half that time. I hope it doesn't shorten the shelf life. I'm a little bit concerned now. We do have a dehumidifier recently that we added to the house, so hopefully that helps. Um, this is from their summer collection, another Suku Pure Color Blush in 127. I do love this. So it's more orange and golden, whereas the one from spring is more peachy, but I think they're a nice complement, like seasonal complement to each other. And because I've had this for less amount of time, no odd texturing right here, which I am thankful for. We'll be keeping this as well. This is another Pure Color Blush uh, released during summer. Collection 126. This is very pretty. I don't think it was as popular as 127, but I like them both a lot. This one's a lot brighter too. Totally different from that orange shade. You've got just bright pink. And both of these blushes went with their, I guess, corresponding eyeshadow palettes. Um, it was good coordination. Moving on to a different brand, I have NARS's Overlust Face Palette, which includes three highlighters and three blushes. I have not, or did not purchase any NARS products this year, but I am looking forward to their face palette this holiday season. I think this is just so beautiful. And they go on beautifully too. Whenever I was not sure or I didn't want to think too hard about what blush, what highlighter combo to use, I would just grab for this. Because whatever I chose, it would be nice and go well with my look. I have here another Merit Cream Blush. This is in the shade Terracotta. Love these. I won't say much more than that, just love them. And they feel great on the skin too. Then I have the Guerlain Meteorites. Uh, this one is in Pearl Glow, limited edition spring release. Really nice all over face. I will be including this uh, when I do my comparison of all over face powders, so this will be included. Then we have another Dior blush, and this is Coral Flight. I am enamored, enamored with this. 
It's so bright that initially I thought, oh, you know, this is gonna be maybe a bit too much. It has a steep learning curve. No, it actually, I mean, you might end up getting a little bit too much product on your blush, depending on the pressure you apply, but you tap off the excess, dab it off, apply, blend it well, it blends nicely. It's just a fabulous color. I don't have anything in my collection that's close to this, and I just, I'm so glad that I picked it up. So that's from the uh, Birds of a Feather collection as well. Another Dior product, um, these are their new compacts. And I just wonder when they're going to convert their blushes to this compact. And maybe not. Maybe they won't. But this is a highlighter. This is a new, their new or reformulated um, Couture, Dior Couture Skin Luminizer. Dior Forever Couture Luminizer. Okay, there we go. That's the name. And this is in the shade Pink Glow. Very pretty. I do like their face products as well. Very pretty. Then we have another Westman Atelier product. This is their Baby Cheek color. Um, this is in the shade Minette. I also love Minette. And next to the Merit Beauty cream blushes, I think it stands out on its own. It also has an extra bit of sheen or shine to it where the other two do not. Um, they're all very emollient. There's a lot of natural oils in the formulation, which is why you see that sheen. But this one also has specks of like sparkle in it, Minette. Beautiful. Love to get my hands on more Westman Atelier blushes. Looking to do that this fall, possibly when Sephora is having their, you know, fall or, um, yeah, fall winter sale. Then we have from Natasha Denona, the Bloom Palette, possibly her most popular face palette, uh, at least for four pan. And definitely due to the product aging, especially with the cream, I see some texture here that I know I didn't do on purpose, at least not intentionally. So um, love this, really versatile, suitable for many different skin tones. I think this is such a hit. Shelf life on these are 18 months. Now that bronze face glow. 12 months, so this is longer. I think it also looks like it's lasted longer. Yes, yeah, so we'll be keeping this. Um, it's good reference when I get like new Natasha Denona products to have something older to compare against. So that's why even if like for the bronze palette looks a little bit iffy, uh, I'm still gonna keep it for now, um, partially for that reason. Then I have two Shantakai bronzers. Gorgeous. They both have a bit of a sheen to them. They're just so lovely. So, so lovely. I'm keeping them both. <laughs> I use this for all over face bronzer or just um, for larger areas, whereas this is that, you know, very deliberate contour. Just get some real sharp edges, sharp shaping. Yes, this is how I use those two shades. Then I have here a, another Stila convertible color and cream blush. I think this is Lilium and it is gross. I've had it for so long. Gross. Ready to declutter this. Actually, I was saving it for this declutter video. Yeah, it's time to go. And then we have another Dior Luminizer. This is Golden Glow. I think it is just as beautiful as Pink Glow. Definitely a success. Um, for Dior with these luminizers, like the relaunch. And I only have one other Dior luminizer that's not newly formulated. Actually, I'm not even sure there's actually a formulation difference. So this is the other luminizer. And this is, uh, for one, the packaging's different. This comes with a pouch as well. Um, these do not. So this is from their summer collection, their Dune collection, and this is Peach Dune. And I think it's beautiful. Um, I believe this does resemble in the new luminizers, um, Coral Glow, I think, which is sold out. Uh, maybe it came back, but I think it most resembles Peach Dune. 
I know they're not the same same, but if you you know missed out on Peach Dune, Coral Glow is your closest shade. Yes. Hourglass palette. Um, this is their ambient metallic strobe lighting palette. So these three highlighters. They're OG bling. And oh, it's amazing. This Flower Beauty highlighter is also really bright, but this blends out really nicely and it just melds into your skin, unlike this here. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely keeping these. Um, they brought it back earlier this year, I think sp early spring of this year, like as a limited. Um, because everybody had been asking for it since it was released as limited edition since 2017 and it was out now they brought it back temporarily um, I don't know if they'll bring it back a third time, but possibly right if it's popular Then I have here the Dior backstage face and body powder um, This could have easily gone into my foundations concealer pile over there for another time, but you could use this not really as a highlighter, but an all over face glow. And this is lovely, very, very lovely powder. I know people have gone through um, one or two of these already because they just use it all the time. So we'll be keeping this. This is in the shade N1. I'll just swatch for you. Yeah, very subtle. Um, I believe I can probably no. this is definitely more suitable for me in the winter and fall I'd probably be one to two shade up from N1 during the summer and then I have here possibly my one of my favorite duos from Chanel Fleur de Printemps talked about this a gazillion time on my channel so I'll just show you this Think you can still get this i highly recommend it <laughs> if you're into kind of warm terracotta like shades lovely it's just so pretty and the original natasha denona face palette that i purchased diamond and glow in the color story daria i know what you're thinking you're thinking this is so big and it's not exactly travel friendly um, the pans are also so big which is why I have not finished this palette or hit pan on any of the products but this will give you all the glow all like as much as you want you can look like a disco ball I've also talked about this a lot so that's all I'm gonna say here I think you can still get this from Sephora or online I'll check if, if that is the case I'll have a link below um, same thing with everything here even for items that I've decluttered, I will have links to them um, if you're interested in checking them out. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is her uh, iced out highlighter. And it's supposed to resemble the Amrezy highlighter, which I don't have. Uh, but everybody really, really enjoyed it when it came out. So this was supposed to, you know, channel the Amrezy highlighter vibe. It's not the same is what I keep hearing people say, and I believe them. And there's a lot of yellow here, but it it actually works for me. This, for like a fall winter highlighter, it actually works really nicely. But it's, it's not everybody's cup of tea, I think because of the micro glitter. I think some people are gonna be put off by that, but if it works for you, I think it's, it's actually a standout. Then I have here another Tarte blush in the shade party it is or it was like a sample from sephora like or one of those rewards i think you can get them for like 100 sephora points um i do like the shade quite a bit but had it for a long time time to part with it so actually as i'm seeing these tart blushes here let me just take them out one by one um this is in the shade dazzle i'm telling you i definitely went through a phase with my Tarte blushes here. This one here actually has glitter in the formulation. I think you can see a little bit of that shimmer. So decluttering that as well. And then I have a Too Faced. Oh my gosh, this is 
this is old, uh, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Medium to Deep Matte Bronzer. Just swatch this. The shade works really well for me, but I think it is, you know, it's time to go, so I'm gonna declutter this. And another Tarte product here. This is actually a highlighter. And I'm proud to say I've actually hit pan, like quite a bit of it. I did use this highlighter. Um, obviously, I did use it a lot. Still decent payoff, nice and bright. Time to let it go, all right. What I have here is the Victoria Beckham Bronzer. And this is in O2. So we have Soleil and Honey. It's just perfect. Um, also mixing the two together will give you a, a different shade. I love the versatility. Then I have another Chantecaille blush here. These Chantecaille blushes, uh, by the way, I didn't mention before. It's also a pinhole in the back. Put something through there, pop this out, and then you can put another shade in. This is in the shade Spitten, which is represented by the elephant. And as you can see, all that micro glitter on the elephant, it's all gone, because I've gone into this a couple of times. But I really like the shade. I think between Grace and Smitten, I think I enjoy Smitten more, especially during the summertime. I think it works better with deeper skin tones, or just more color. Um, and then another Chantecaille product here. I have to be careful when I open this because it did come kind of cracked in two. <laughs> this is the Le Payette. I don't believe this is a limited edition. I thought for a while that they had discontinued this, but they brought it back in July, I want to say. Also, it is available um, at Look Fantastic as well. So if you're interested in this highlighter, I think you can still get it at Look Fantastic. Um, and I've also seen it come back uh, on Chantecaille's website. We'll be keeping this. And this is um, from last summer, Chantecaille's Radiance Cheek Chic and Highlighter Duo in Rose. Look at that, beautiful. The most elegant, subtle highlighter that still has a nice impact. And the blush, so pretty, so, so pretty. It's kind of similar to the Suku Pure Color Blush. I think 126 this one was, it's almost 127, yeah, similar to that. A little bit lighter. I wonder what happens if I were to mix the highlighter. Let me swatch it here. Not as pigmented and not as bright, but definitely channeling those vibes. Then I have the Lisa Eldridge's Cream Blushes. Uh, we'll be keeping all of these. My main complaint, and if you've been following this channel, you've saw my videos on these, is just three out of the four. Take some effort to get the product out to squeeze so that's my main complaint for these, but they're very pigmented, beautiful. We'll be keeping these. And you know, as we're talking about cream blushes, let's just get them out of the way here. The Chantecaille Cheek Gel Lay. They have a cooling effect when you apply them to your cheeks and I rather enjoy them. Shelf life is 12 months and I've gotten some really good use out of both shades so far. So this is Happy and this is Lively. They do have a sheen to them. Looks like we have a random item here. This is from ColourPop and it's their freckle pen. I bought it as like a novelty thing to try out and I, you know, I do like playing around and I've done so a few times with this. Unfortunately, it smells like it's expired. It has that same 
chemical, like a rancid smell to it as that Pat McGrath blush that I had to return. So I am, you know, I'm not getting a reaction out of this, but it definitely doesn't smell right to me. So I'm decluttering this and just kind of slipped in with the rest of these blushes and highlighters and bronzers. Anyway, keeping these two for sure. These are the Sailor Moon blushes. So cute. Cute. And this one has some glitter shimmer to it. And I think this one's a matte. So the two, this shade here is from the moon. And the other is Cat's Eye. We're almost done. We only have a small handful of products here. I have the Rare Beauty, the Stay Vulnerable Collection in nearly apricot. I like how this product feels on the cheeks. Um, it is quite sheer though, and I just don't find myself grabbing for it, but it's so new in my collection that I'm not quite ready to part with it. It's very pretty. I'm gonna keep it for now. I don't know it's gonna make it through the next clutter though. Then I have here from Milk, this is their lip or cheek and lip stick shade. <laughs> you know what I mean, um, in the shade Work. I love this. I just love it. It has the right color, just kind of goes with everything, anything. Easy to work with and blend, also clean formulation. Um, this is sample size or you know maybe the Sephora 100 points. Can't remember how I got this, but I love it, keeping it. And then my third and final Chantecaille Cheek Shade in Emotion, the B. The glitter on the B is long gone, but you still see the outline. This is the lightest and softest of the three that I have shade wise. Very pretty. Very pretty. Then we have Jouez Skinny Dip Powder Highlighter. Uh, it, it is in the shade Skinny Dip. This is really, really nice. I forget just how nice Jouez products can be. I mean, look at that. Woo! Feels great, blends easily, just so silky. And then I have here another Sailor Moon collectible product that I don't even think I swatched. This is the shape of their of Sailor Moon's like transformation compact for those for those who care. <laughs> yes, collector's item. I have no plans to use it and just keeping it with the rest of the other, you know, face products. Oh, and this one here, my first Chanel highlighter from a dear, dear friend. You know, I'm in a tough position. It's definitely way past its time. You can see all like, yeah, that texture, it's not supposed to look like that. In fact, I think the color is also warped and changed over time as well. So I'm going to actually declutter this, even though I want to keep it for my Chanel collection. There's just so, there's just so many products that are going to come out. Um, I don't think there is a point to keep this. I'd like to keep the pouch and the brush though. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to declutter this, but keep this because it can be used for any other compact. And then I have here. Um, these are the e.l.f. mini or bite-sized face palettes. Yes, comes with a highlighter and blush, which I just don't grab for. I think these shades are beautiful. I think the highlighters are okay as well, but they don't quite, the highlighters especially don't quite blend in um, as easily as, you know, some of the other highlighters we saw. So I'm actually going to declutter these because I'm just, I'm just not going to use them. We got another sneaky, sneaky product here. This is actually a brow gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This one's a Sephora 100 point um, reward. Also, it has gone bad because you can just tell from the smell, decluttering this. Then I have from NARS, the multiple. Um, I bought this as a backup when I realized this is in the shade El Tai. Uh, they were discontinuing it. So I bought it as a backup and then since then I've kind of moved on to like different <laughs> bronzers 
but as a cream bronzer, I think it's great. The shade really works for me. I'd actually like to do a bronzer video, but I just don't have that many bronzers to make it like really worthwhile. As I build it up one day, as I build it up. And this is from Pat McGrath, uh, another highlighter, Divine Rose. This one is out of the three that I have, especially glittery, but it is so pretty. Reminds me a bit of the Flower Beauty highlighter, just a little more subdued, less, less chunky actually, and blends better, but still quite a bit of glitter as part of the formulation. Keeping it. And then this is the first Pat McGrath highlighter that I got. This came out holiday last year. Combined with a lid, it's a paperweight. For that alone, I don't think I'll ever part with this. <laughs> it's a paperweight, good for decoration. And this is more in a, as you can see, a metallic finish. More subtle than the others. Um, I like it. And actually, if I am swatching the highlighters for you for Pam McGrath, I feel like I should do that for Golden Nectar too, part of her Divine Blush collection. This out of the three is my favorite. It is metallic, but also has some glitter. This is my favorite out of the three, if I had to choose one. Last product, this is from Lisa Eldridge, her Elevated Glow in the shade Crystal Nebula. You guys have also saw me or seen me use this a lot recently. It's got a jumbo doe foot. You only need a little bit teensy wincy bit of product and it just, and that's probably how much I need and I'll see it. I can add a little bit more, a lot more. It feels great on the skin. Look at that. It feels great on the skin all day long. It lasts all day. I'm just so thoroughly impressed by this Elevated Glow. So all these items, I'm going to put them back here so I can declutter them. Time to organize everything.